Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the creator of that idea, Dinesh Shanasai, to the show. Here with my good friend Dinesh Comic Fam, you're in for a treat. As soon as I saw the Vice release of the most expensivest and you brought the comics to the table and blew his mind, I was hoping I can get you here today to just chat with me a little bit about that process yeah. and how it went down. Yeah, happy to, happy to. So, of course, we have Dinesh, but you do so much. What's the best rundown if someone wants to like oh, learn about who you are? Because you're a man of many things. I um, am the CEO and Chief Creative Officer of Bad Idea. We're a comic book publisher. Uh, I run a film and TV company, and I have a, a vinyl toy company. And I guess I'm a collector as well. A collector of fine items, collectibles, and you blew two chains mine. So you can go check this video out. I'm not gonna like rehash every beat of the video. We did that on the podcast already. Yeah. However, what I wanted to first find out is when this started and you knew that you had to blow his mind, what was the process of collecting and choosing the products? Did they ask you specific? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was them. They had a very specific mandate in mind. They wanted, actually this whole thing started with Key Collector. They reached out to Key Collector, Key Collector. Youth Code Tom 101, the best comic app in existence for a free two weeks. Support the show. Shout out Nick Alanis. Nick's awesome. So Nick got in touch. He was like, hey, I got these guys from most expensivest. They want someone in LA that has a big, cool collection. I thought of you. Can you do it? Can you, uh, can you do it soon? I said, sure, I'll get on the phone with them. They said, we want things, comics, that are very rare and very expensive. And so I did a little Zoom with them. I showed them some books. They picked not all the ones I would have picked. They didn't want Action One. They didn't want any art. I showed them a Mark Jeweler's Uncanny X-Men 266. And they were like, that's amazing. And I was like, here's the original art to the cover. And they're like, nah, we're good. I was like, are you sure? No, we just want that book. Wow. So they picked. It was their whatever they had in mind. No kidding. So um, they declined a bunch of stuff. Did they give you, like, dollar amounts they were after? They wanted the higher the dollar, the better. But they wanted more than that. They wanted unique things, really rare things. You pulled out my favorite part of the entire bit was when you transitioned from, I think it was Amazing Spider-Man, Cap 1, and then you pull out Conceptual Funnies. Yes. So yes. Did, was that planned, the Invisible Comic, or did you just have that locked in? No, that was not approved. Most of us <laughs> did not approve that. Uh, I, ha you know, I, I have a job to do. I would be irresponsible if I didn't pimp that idea a little bit. Uh, so I brought it, and I snuck it in there, and it made the cut. A lot of stuff didn't make the cut. The interview was long. It was like an hour, hour and a half, uh, but that made the cut. Any stories about the interview process or hang out? What, what was Two Chains like? I didn't really get a chance. I mean, he's very warm and friendly on camera. Beyond that, I think he was very focused on the show. I don't know if he had studied comics and that was trying to remember things. Well, maybe before we go further, for anyone who hasn't seen the video, what are these uh, sessions typically like? Because I've seen Two Chains get inter or have these meetings with people who just bring out like really expensive cigars or marijuana yeah. or water. Like he's just there to get kind of stoned is what it looks like. Was he pretty, was he pretty he was, stony? He was completely out there. How, He's how, gone. I mean, I wasn't, when he walked in, I wasn't sure he knew where he was. It was awesome. It was everything you wanted to be. He's just like a giant banana and he's out of his mind stone. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so you go in there, you didn't really get a chance to meet him beforehand. So this was like an authentic reaction to everything. Yes, and I didn't really get to talk to him afterwards because it didn't go well. It looks great on camera, but there was a, there was a couple, there was one moment in particular where I think he was like, I don't like this guy at all. Oh, can you can you get into a little that sure, a little bit? Sure. Like what what didn't he like? We were talking about books, and we were talking about. I was explaining that a lot of times in comics, they'll platform characters. A character will appear in a bigger book and then go on to do his own thing. I showed him Hulk 181, sure, famously first Wolverine, and he said, Oh my God, that's the first minutes of Wolverine. I love Wolverine. Who doesn't love Wolverine? I said, Yep, this is it. He goes, I need that book, I want that book. I said, great, that, it's quite a common book in other grades. In this grade also, if you're willing to spend the money, you can find if you wait a little bit. He said, well, well I want that one. You know, he wanted yours. I was like, well, I, I'm not really looking to sell this one. And he said, well, well, how much would it be? And at that point, those books were about 150, uh, 150,000. So I said to him, 150,000, but for you, two chains, for you. And he went, oh yeah, for me, what? What's the price? And I go, 250. <laughs> you know, like a terrible dad joke. Uh, Cause you've got all these lights, I don't, it's intimidating. Sure. And, uh, and he got, he went real, like he lost character, went real quiet. And he just, he leaned into me and he said, you know, I have a lot of power here. And I thought he was doing a bit. Oh. And then he said, I can have this whole segment cut. It's like you would never hear. 
And I'm like, okay, I don't. I thought I was doing you guys a favor. You're like, I'm just doing a joke right here, brother. He got really angry. I looked at the director, and the director's like, go and keep going. This is good <laughs> stuff. And then, and then he snapped back in, and he was good. So you pissed two chains off just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, sounds like it was a little bit of an awkward moment there. Was your perception that he didn't really know much about comics? Because like when I was watching him talk, compared to the other interviews I've seen him do, yeah, it seems like, you know, hey, it's cool to see expensive stuff, but it's like kind of a funny thing more than you know like a novelty type of thing. But when you were showing him comics, I saw like a different twinkle in his eyes. Yeah, like he was yeah. valuing it a little bit different, mostly because it's Americana, it's history, but. What was your box? Did it feel different? Yeah, yeah. What, what, I talked to the director about this afterwards. I said that was interesting. I didn't expect that. I expected him to, to not really be aware or maybe have done a little research and then have that emotional distance. He said, no, no, this is the kind of stuff he loves. He loves comic books. He loves Americana. He loves geek culture. He doesn't know that much about comic books. He's not an expert like everyone here is at, at, at the con, but he watches, I'm sure, the movies. He's aware in, through osmosis, like, like other people are, of what the big books are. And I think seeing them got him very excited. Did you get a chance to bring up any other bad idea stuff besides the Invisible comic? Uh, no, no. I, I, I tried to limit to just to that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I any did. I did. A couple of people knew I was going to go, and they, they were like, give, give me a shout-out. Give, give my, my, my book a shout-out. Give, and I gave a couple of shout-outs, tried to weave them in. They all got cut. Yeah, anything that got cut that you, you wish maybe didn't? Um, I brought... Uh, I think it got cut. I actually haven't seen the final edit in its whole. I can't, I can't watch it. I brought um, these DC ash cans. Uh, the Superboy, Supergirl, ash cans. They are uh, used to secure trademarks in the 40s. The OG ones. The OG ones, black and white. The interiors are just another book. They put them together, send them to the trademark office, secure a trademark. They're super rare. Uh, I think one of them was one of two, and the other one's the only one in the world. And they're historical items. I love that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't think I made the cut. All right, so you mentioned um, original art being some of the things that you suggested you bring. What would be the rundown if you had the option to blow his mind with five pieces of original art in your collection that you would break out? I actually showed them five, so, so I can do this. I showed them um, Spidey 300, the cover. Todd McFarlane, you still own it, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's at the um, Beyond Amazing Spider-Man, the exhibit, right now in uh, Kansas City. It's awesome. They did a great I, I job. I really want to see this in person one day. Dude, I, so should, cool. I'll get you hooked up with them. They'll send you out there. Um, Ultimate Fallout 4, the cover. First Miles Morales. Yeah, that's right. You got that next-gen OG spec. Dude, that book. That book. Did you see the new movie? Of course I've seen it. Fantastic. Fant amazing. Can't wait for the next one. Those two, um, I had the first page from Daredevil 1. Bill Everett. Daredevil 1, Bill Everett, yeah. First ever Daredevil. What else did I, what else did I show him? Um, uh, Uncanny 266. I showed that cover. I yeah. love that cover. And then there was something modern. I can't remember what it was. It was, it was a modern interior page, a first appearance page, but I can't remember what it is right now. You have a pretty big uh, next-gen original art collection. Deadpool. It was Deadpool. New Mutant 98 page. Right. Rob Liefeld. Love Rob Liefeld. Me too. It's awesome. I think he's a great dude. He's killing it on whatnot, too. I don't know if you ever is watched he? any of his streams. Oh. oh. Rob Liefeld, unfiltered, just chilling in front of a camera selling comics. He has a clamp like this and he puts the comic in it, and it makes it an instant 9.4, nine and you love every <laughs> second of it. Oh, my God. He's just written, man. He should charge tickets for that. If he's I, just going I'd off. Pay. I'd pay to, to, to be there to I'm watch him do his thing for two hours. Amazing. So um, this is really cool. I, I, I enjoyed the video partially because big fan of 2 Chains. Yeah. It's funny to see a reaction to comic books, something we all love, but also seeing comics enter into the mainstream, it's super special. Um, it's just It doesn't happen often, so when it does... Seeing someone like yourself who respects us so much, it helps the industry. And I just want to give you the kudos and Thanks, um, also ask, like, what other things do you think could be happening? Because you're literally doing things with bad idea that's never been done, kind of paving the way for new publishers and independent companies to, like, get their footing in this market. Um, you're now bre breaking into the mainstream with some of this stuff. What other things in comics do you want to see more of? I mean, I, lo I love exactly what you're talking about. Shows like Most Against Us, there's so many shows like that, they should be talking about comics. It is the beating heart of not just pop culture, but culture now across the globe. That museum I talked about, Beyond Amazing Spider-Man, that's amazing. The, I went to the opening night, it, there was all these kids. So, I mean, like a sea of kids, under 10 years old, dressed like Miles, dressed like Gwen, Spider-Gwen. It's amazing, that's the next generation, right? So that's what we've got to see. 
I think those kinds of things. Um, I love the crowdfunding world that's happening right now. It makes comic books a little more um, easy to, to get. You don't have to go to a store if you're not near a store. Yo, plug Digital. your recent major success. We did a book called Megalith. The, I think the most beautiful book you, you will ever see. This gentleman told me about Megalith four years ago? Yeah, yeah. Five, may have been five years. I mean five. You're like, yo, I've been working on this book for a long time, and when it's done, it's going to be amazing. And it, and it is. Louis LaRosse is the artist. He's done the work of his career, putting so much other stuff to shame. Matt Kinsaw Ryder, Laura Martin, best colorist in the history of comics, Taylor Esposito, and then we had this like who's who of comics people come in to celebrate, and it did very well for us. What did it hit on Kickstarter? About four hundred thousand dollars. Four hundred thousand dollars. It's amazing. And we're gonna we're gonna because we're irresponsible, we're gonna sink a lot of that, almost all of that, right back into the book. So we've been talking about enlarging the size of it, adding an acetate dust jet, all sorts of crazy stuff. I love it. That's yeah, gonna be cool. What do we got going on over at Bad Idea? We're just we're just grinding away, man. We've got a slew of books coming out. We did a Bad Idea Two, which is like our, our big second slate, part one. And then we've got Bad Idea Two Part Two coming. I hate to say it. Usually when you do two slates, you look at the books and you go, okay, let's put some of the ones we like the best here and some of the ones we like the best here. This time we said, let's put all the ones we like the most over here. Okay. So Bad Day 2 Part 2, I think, are the best books I've ever been involved with. Megalith was meant to be in there. We pulled it out to give it a bigger audience through crowdfunding. But that's, that's an example of the quality of Bad Day 2 Part 2. Wow. You're just, just raising the bar. I assume it's because after multiple failures. I mean, Bad Idea has already gone under twice. Yeah. Um, and came back as a donut company. Yeah. And then that counts as a failure too, right? Because that's... It's that not... Gone? Yeah, donuts are gone. But it was all, they're all There's done. no money in donuts, turns is, out. Is that... Was that a shock to you? You know, it's a big zero. I should have known. You know, man, what's your favorite kind of donut? Oh, the Krispy Kreme glazed. Just original You don't glazed. like anything inserted in the donut? No jelly, no cream, nothing like that? When I was a kid, I used to eat jelly donuts. Uh, and I can't do it anymore. I think that passion that you lost is probably why the donut grind didn't really work for you guys. But I am excited to see that you flipped it back, got back into publishing. Yeah. Um, but I don't love donuts. You're right. Are you, More of a cupcake but is there guy. Is a part of you that's worried about that idea making it this uh, third round? Is there a party that's worried? I, yeah, I you're like you. Not. You guys had a couple failures and now you're back? No, I, I think I think everyone's excited for us. We, okay. They're like, hey, good, good for you. You know, you, you, you fell back, down a couple come back times, kid, you know? but you don't give up. Okay. We're like, like the that. guys, you know, like in the Olympics, when the 100 meters, they shoot the gun and then someone trips. And then there's no chance they're winning, but they cross the line and everyone just gives them that slow. That's us. That's it's, a bad idea. It's some of the most unique marketing I've seen in comics. And, and I applaud it. It's been fun to cover every random thing that happens. Um, seeing not just myself, but all my friends get memed the hell holding signs at yeah. New York City Comic Con. Yeah. That was great. It was great. Um, constantly seeing books land on various collectors lists because of comics being a little bit more difficult to acquire or just so wanted and people not having gone through the, uh, the grind of securing them ahead of time. Um, it's just, it causes excitement that feels like comics years ago, you know? Yeah, and I think, I think the industry is responding. I've been really surprised. We're doing this because this is fun to us and it's different. We did the Valiant thing, the traditional thing. That would have been boring. We're trying to break new ground maybe try and build a better mousetrap in some ways. But now I'm seeing all these creators come in, huge Joe Quesada, Lenio Francis, you, James Harron, Mike Carey, all these amazing creators coming to us, knocking on our door saying, hey, that's fun. I want to be involved in that. It's like, oh, I, I guess this is valid. This is not just us being idiots. Follow Dinesh, but more importantly, follow Bad Idea yep. Comics over on Instagram. Um, sign up to their newsletter. That's how I keep up with all things that you guys got cooking over there. Thanks. Thanks for calling. I appreciate you, my brother. It's always good to see you. Thanks, Tom. And as always, geek responsibly. Make sure to follow Bad Idea over on Instagram. Sign up to their newsletter to keep up on all the unique marketing that they're doing. You know, bringing mainstream to comic books, I'm digging it.